In the previous video, we learnt about force triangle method to find resultant of two forces. But when you have three or more forces, this method is not useful. And the method of summing the x and y components is a preferred method to find the resultant. So in this video, we'll talk about this method in detail. So what are the x and y rectangular components of a force? From high school physics, you know that if you have a force F in XY plane, it can be resolved into two components, Fx along X axis and Fy along Y axis. And if the force makes an angle of theta with the X axis, then the Fx component is F cos theta and the Y component Fy is equal to F sin theta. What are the steps involved in finding the resultant? Here on the right, you have three forces, F1, F2, and F3 in the XY plane, and we are interested in finding the resultant. So the first step is to resolve the forces into the rectangular components. And what you see is that these three forces have been resolved into the X components, F1X, F2x and F3x and the y components F1y, F2y and F3y. This diagram also shows the resultant of these three forces as R which also is an xy plane. The second step is to add the xy components of the given forces algebraically and the x component of R, this would be the x component of the resultant and this would be equal to the algebraic sum of the x components of the three forces. Similarly, Ry would be equal to the algebraic sum of the y components of the three forces. And once we know the x and y components of the resultant, they could be combined in the third step to get the magnitude and the direction of the resultant. So let us apply this principle in finding resultant of several forces. So here we have a problem where there are four forces and we are interested in determining the resultant. Let's assume that the resultant is R and its components along X and Y axis are Rx and Ry. So Rx would be equal to sum of the X components of the forces F1, F2, F3 and F4 and can be written as sigma Fx. Rx is equal to this equation and there are four terms. I will explain each one of them. The first one is the X component of the force F1. The X component of F1 would be 3 cos 30. We do not know the angle the force F2 makes with X axis but nevertheless its slope is 1 over 2 and therefore this side of the little triangle would be root 5 and therefore the x component of F2 would be 2.24 times 2 over root 5 and since the component is pointing in minus x direction the term would have a negative sign. This is the x component of F3 and since F3 makes an angle of 60 degrees with minus x axis, its x component would be 2 cos 60. And since the component would be pointing towards minus x direction, we would have a negative sign for this term. The last term is the x component of the force F4. And the slope of this force is 12 over 5. And therefore, this side would be 13. The hypotenuse of this little triangle would be 13. And therefore, Fx would be 3.9 times 5 upon 13. And this, when simplified, will be equal to 1.094 kilonewtons. In a similar manner, we'll find out the y component of the resultant R, and that will be equal to sigma Fy. The y component of F1 is 3 sine 30 degrees which is the first term. The y component of F2 would also be in positive y direction therefore it will be positive 
and would be equal to 2.24 times 1 over root 5 which is the second term. The y component of f3 would be 2 times sin 60 degrees and since it is pointing in minus y direction we will have the negative sign here and similarly f4's y component would be 3.9 times 12 over 13 and since it will be pointing in the minus y direction we shall have a negative sign here and this equation will work out to ry is equal to minus 2.83 kilonewtons. We now have the x and y components of the resultant R and now we can combine them to get the magnitude. The magnitude of the resultant is under root Rx square plus Ry square plugging in the values we get the magnitude of the resultant is 3.03 kilonewtons and its direction can be found from this equation and that would yield minus 68.86 degrees and this can be graphically shown as this resultant representing 3.03 kilonewtons and making an angle of minus 68.86 degrees with respect to the x axis. So, this was a fairly simple problem. Now, let us handle a little intricate problem. In this problem, we have a pole AB which is held in position with the help of three cables. These are the three cables AC, AD and AE. We are given tension in these two cable, but we have to find out the tension in this cable so that the resultant of these three forces is directed along AB. So, we draw the forces acting on point A of the pole. This is 900 Newton. We are also given the tension force acting at point A due to the tension in cable AD and that is 1200 Newton. The tension in cable A is unknown. Let us call it T and the resultant of these three forces is along the line AB. We do not know the magnitude of this resultant R and we are supposed to find the magnitude of this resultant. Well, the first step is to set up a coordinate system. So, we normally fix x axis horizontally and y axis vertically. But wait a minute, the very fact that the resultant is along the line AB gives me a hint that we should reorient the axis so that y axis aligns with AB like this. The advantage in doing so is that this would render our calculations simpler and quicker. If this critical point is not very clear to you at this stage, let me go ahead and solve the problem and I will come back to this point and explain you the rationale behind the choice of the coordinate system. So, we make a nice diagram wherein we show the x and y axis inclined from the horizontal and vertical. These are the three cable tension forces acting at point A. The resultant is along AB and before we compute the components of these three forces along x and y axis, we should first find out the angles they make with the x axis. So, in the triangle ABE, in this triangle we know the two angles. So, the third angle would be equal to 65 degrees and therefore, this angle be equal to 25 degrees. So, the force T makes an angle of 25 degrees with x axis. Now, this angle is same as angle C A B and since C A D is 30 degrees, this would be 65 minus 30 or equal to 35 degrees. And since this total angle is 90 degrees, 
this angle would be 90 minus 65 that is 25 degrees. So, the force 900 newtons makes an angle of 25 degrees with minus x axis. Now, let us work out the inclination of the 1200 newton force with the x axis and that will be 25 plus 30 that is 55 degrees. So, this angle is 55 degrees. So, now we know the inclination of all the three forces with respect to x axis and we can find their components. So, R x is equal to sigma f x and since R is along the y axis, its component along x axis is 0. Therefore, the sum of x components of all the three forces would be equal to 0 and therefore, we can say that 0 is equal to T cos 45 degrees minus 900 cos 25 degrees minus because the component of 900 is pointing towards minus x axis. Similarly, the component of the 1200 Newton force would be minus 1200 cos 55 degrees because this angle is 55 degrees. And simplifying this equation, we get T equal to 1659 Newton. Now, let us do summation of the y components of forces and equate it to the y component of R. So, R y is sigma F y and T's y component would be minus T sin 25. In fact, all the three forces would have negative y components. This would be 900 sin 25, this would be 1200 sin 55 and this would work out to minus 2065 Newtons. So, the magnitude of R is 2065 Newton and that is the answer and we are done. Now, let me come back to the point of why we chose this coordinate system which has x and y axis not along horizontal and vertical, but inclined. Well, take a note of this equation. This equation has got only one unknown that is T. And since we have one equation and one unknown, we have been able to work out the value of T without any problem. And then plugging in this value of T into this equation, we have been able to get the magnitude of R in a straightforward manner. But suppose we had continued with the coordinate system in this manner that is x axis along horizontal and y axis along vertical, then this equation would have two unknowns r as well as t. And with one equation we cannot solve two unknowns and therefore we would need another equation and that equation would come from here and the second equation would again have two unknowns r and t and now we would have two equations two unknowns r and t and we will have to solve the simultaneous equations which would take little more time and in that respect by reorienting the axis we have been able to reduce the calculations and make it simpler. So, the, the key point to learn from this solved problem is that in many problems of mechanics you can make your maths much simpler and easier by reorienting the x and y axis appropriately. So, in case you like the video, please do not forget to click on the thumbs up sign and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.